Welcome to this second section on looking at fundamental and economic data to analyse and trade financial markets. In this section we're going to look at two particular aspects of the markets. We're going to look at the macro side of things, economic data and the big cycles in the main uh, areas of financial assets. In particular we're going to look at stock markets, commodities and bonds and how they interact with one another uh, with the business cycle and all the economic data. Then we're going to take a look at micro information at the company level. What are the key metrics that you as a trader need to understand and interpret when you're making trading decisions? This has been demonstrated in business and it's been demonstrated in stock markets. One can think of the example of 2001 with the top of the dot-com boom as being a classic example of excitement and overtrading that led to a bubble bursting. And similar conditions were seen in the credit markets in 2007 and 2008. After a period of excitement and overtrading, almost inevitably the bubble burst. This is important for us as traders for two reasons. We need to understand where we are on the cycle and we need to examine our own behaviour, almost to look at ourselves rather than to look at the marketplace. Are we getting carried away? Are we too depressed? How do you keep a middle view of the markets and keep a settled and sensible trading plan in place? And this cycle, which has been around for hundreds of years, is just worth remembering and thinking about when you're looking at the markets. Now, how is this of use to us? Well, we've looked at the idea of trading indices and we've looked at the idea of tra trading subsectors and of individual stocks. It may be that you decide to look at the business cycle in terms of whether or not you should have a position in a stock index. Or you may want to try and finesse your position and maybe focus on a particular industry sector. And this chart may help with your research and ideas and formulating a strategy plan for doing so. So you don't just trade the index, it may be you have a particular sector that you particularly like or research a lot. And hopefully this diagram will help explain to you where those sectors sit against the business cycle. Let's now look at micro information, the information that is key to understanding the valuation of individual stocks whether they're under or overvalued, and the sentiment the market has attached to particular stocks. Certain amounts of information are effectively controlled by a calendar regarding stock information. This is the dividend payments, any announcements about directors' dealings, and any material announcements about new or larger shareholders appearing on the share register. This information is obviously price sensitive and so is controlled by the exchange. With all the information that is available on all the companies quoted on exchanges, there is a deluge of data, figures and news that is constantly bombarding the investor and trader. Interestingly though, a lot of this news and information concentrates around two periods of the year, sometimes called the reporting season. This tends to be in February and August of each year, although there are sometimes intermediate quarterly reports as well. Again, this is an opportunity, or is certainly a period of time when you should be focusing very closely on what the market's looking at. Companies make forward-looking statements about their future trading prospects, and they report on their recent results. Again, the interesting thing for us as traders is whether the news that comes out is pretty much as expected, or is a surprise, or dare one say a shock. <music> 